Hey everybody, it's Bob from Wamps Tech, and today we're going to start a new series on creating a Glide app from scratch related to a gamification of your business, your classroom, your organization. So let's get started. The first thing that I always do when creating an app from scratch is create the user profile sheet. So down at the bottom, we see that I have users at the bottom, and we have to fill in this inf some information, right? So let's put in uh, their email address, their username, their image, avatar maybe, uh, their guild, and then I'm going to call this one profile complete. Okay. So this one's obviously filled with their email, name, image, uh, what guild they belong to and then whether or not their profile is the very last, this is, I'll show you what this column is for momentarily, but it's gonna be a way for them to complete their profile onboarding process. All right, we're gonna create another sheet here for this tutorial called guilds. This can be teams, groups, whatever you wanna call it. Guilds is fun. And so let's do like guild name, guild image. If you wanted to have like motto and guild captain and this, that, and the other, feel free to add some additional fields here related to this guild. Guild color, maybe. Right. Um, this could be houses for your organization or different departments of your organization. Right. Uh, classic as Harry Potter, right? You have you know, your Hogwarts houses kind of thing. So uh, let's kind of emulate that. So let's do a guild name of Lions, Dragons. Um, how about so their mythical beast? Um, unicorns. And what else? Something dark like uh, beasts or something. I don't know. OK, guild color. We could do gold green, white, and red. There you go. Um, and actually for guild image, I'm going to delete this for a moment because we are going to add an image, but I want to show you a trick. All right, come back here over here to the sheet, or uh, the Glide app. So we're going to, and you see here now that we go to go.glideapps.com, we sign in. Uh, if you haven't yet created a Glide account yet, Look at the link in the description below, and it's my referral link. So um, I'll get some bonus. You get a win. Win win, right? All right, once you've signed in, we're going to create an app from a Google Sheet. My Google Sheet is called Gamification Tutorial. So that's the one I'm going to look for when this, this loads. It should be right there on top. Come on, Google. There we go. Gamification Tutorial. All right, and we see that my app by default has chosen an emoji and a color for me, and it's put in those two tabs already. Fine. Now, we haven't yet signed into our app, and when we do, uh, our email address will actually be populated automatically. So again, the very first thing that I do once I get to the builder is set up how I want users to sign in. So I come over here to my settings, and I go to sign in, and I change it from public to public with email. Now, if you have a pro app and you wanted to lock down your app, you could always set up, uh, create an email whitelist here. Uh, we're not going to do that for this tutorial. And then we're going to allow sign in with Google account because it's easier for our users. If you want to take some time to play around with the greeting and the description, which show up over here, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to go here to design. I'm going to at least change my icon here to something a little prettier related to um, gamification. How about that? Nice gold. I like gold. All right. So the app has started us off with our users tab and our guilds tab. Fine. Uh, we see that once we mark this as public with email, then over here in the layout, we now have a menu icon. So now when I click the menu icon, I see a sign-in uh, header. And when clicking on this, if I'm in my layout tab, 
I have the option now to set the source for my user profile sheet. Always do this right from the get-go. It's one less thing you have to worry about later. So my sheet is going to be the user sheet. And we're going to set username, email address, and avatar. It already lined it up for me. Perfect. All right, so now when I hit close, I now when I hit sign in, you now see that my email address is here. Okay. But it's still asking me to sign into the app, and that's because there's no email addresses yet in our sheet. So what I like to do as well is come over here to the users, and I simulate the fact that I've signed in by just typing in my email address here. If you actually wanted to publish your app and visit the link and sign in, you can. But I'm just simulating it by typing it in right to the email address. So now when I give this a refresh, I should see that the sign in now says my email address, and it does. All right. So uh, the next thing that we do is we come over here to the tabs, and we can set the images for these tabs if we want. Uh, we can do that real fast here. So um, we're actually going to use the Users tab three times in this tutorial. The first time will be the My Profile tab. And so we can find a, an icon related to Profile. How about this one? That's fine. Uh, we're going to create another tab here, still the Users tab. And we're going to call this All Users. We can do Neutral Multiple. Or is it Multiple Neutral? There we go, something like this maybe. And then we're gonna create another tab here called onboarding. Actually, I don't wanna name it. You know why? Because when you name it, it says whatever the name is up here at the top, and I want my onboarding process to be super clean. So I'm gonna leave it blank. Okay, and I'm just gonna know that my onboarding tab is the blank one. You don't have to name your tabs, you can leave them blank, that's fine. And you can actually include whatever icon you want for your onboarding. Um, the smiley shine big eyes. Fine, that's fine, because actually my users are never going to see the icon for this tab. All right. Um, and then my guilds. So guilds, how about like a banner or something, right? Um, do they have banner icon? Mm, meh. How about flag? Flag icon. Not a good one anyway. All right, how about an award? Give me something that looks like a, like a banner. Ooh, like this kind of. Maybe something like this. It can work like a guild banner. Cool. And I'm going to tuck my guilds away in the menu. I'm going to come back to that later. All right, same thing on my profile. We're, we're going to come to it eventually here. All right, now, uh, also what I do right from the get-go is whenever I have user profiles, I like to set up a column in my sheet that specifies whether or not a profile is complete, and this will help us in our onboarding process. So I'm going to come over here to Add Column, and I'm going to create an If-Then-Else column, and I'm going to usually call this Has Profile. And we're going to do a series of cases here to say when the profile is not complete, right? So if their email address is empty, then they don't have a profile. Is empty, then false. How about if they don't have a username? If username is empty, then false, and so forth. If avatar is empty, then false. For this tutorial, we're going to have them just select their own guild is false. You can assign them a guild if you're setting up your users. That's fine too. And lastly, if um, profile complete is not one, then false. I'll show you why we're doing this in just a minute. Okay, and otherwise, true. Great. So it's because all of these are false or not filled out, they're empty. And because this is not one, then our has profile is false. Once all of these things are filled out, and this equals the number one, then this will equal true, and now we have a user profile. All right, so let's create our user profile onboarding process. So this is our onboarding tab over here, and let's get rid of a couple of things. Uh, first off, we want to make this a details view, 
and we don't want to have any of this information in there. We want to create all the information. So what I typically do is I create a rich text at the top, and I make it custom, and I add a nice little emoji in here. And I'll say something like, welcome. But that's really small, so we use some markdown text to add a hashtag in front, and then now that's nice and bold. So hashtag space is a header one. Three hashtags is a header three. So we can do three hashtags, and then um, it looks like you are new here, right? And I can do a couple spaces, and then a couple of return characters, and then I can do some text like, let's set up your profile. And I can spell. There we go. And now we need to include some fields where they're going to set up their profile. And all of those are entry fields, and they're at the bottom. So here we go to text entry. We're going to start off with their username. Username and the hint text can be something like, what shall we call you? OK. Um, the next one was their guild. And we want them to select a guild. So we'll do a choice. And we'll make our sheet the guild's sheet with the guild name. The column will be the guild. And title will be guild, fine. Make it required. And then let's see, we can do a pill box here. Ooh, it just fits, look at that. Now if any of these got cut off, where I'll say like D-R-A-G-O dot dot dot, then I wouldn't use this layout, I would use the drop down layout, like so. But this one's fine, since all my guilds fit. So we can do something like select a guild. All right, and then we have their user image. So we'll have an image entry. I can never find choice. I can never find image picker. Okay, image picker. And this will be the avatar. And we'll say upload an avatar. All right, and since we're doing proper case here, you'll have to have it match. All right, and the last thing we do here is like to create a button that lets them complete their profile. So we'll say complete profile. And what we do is we have a feature where the action of this button is to increment profile complete by one. So when they push this button, then, the, then that column will be incremented by one every time they push it. But they're only going to push it once, because the moment that they push it, uh, then this screen will disappear, and it will get sent to their profile. And we'll work on that in just a minute. Now, I don't want them to do this early. So I'm going to create a second button here, also called Complete Profile, but we're going to make it a grayed out button. right? Okay, and we want this button to do nothing. So the trick to do that is in my user sheet, I'm going to create a column here, maybe a template column. I usually call mine dead link. And you just simply type in a hashtag. Because anytime you, you specify a hashtag as a link, it's a link that doesn't do anything. But it recognizes it as a link, which is what's most important. It's just a link that goes nowhere. So now in my button, my grayed out button, and the features, I'm gonna have, oops, not this one, the other one. So here's my grayed out one. Oh, sorry, okay, yeah. Uh, so instead of an increment action, I'm going to do an open link action, but the link is going to be that dead link. So now when they click on the button, nothing happens, right? And this is gonna show until they've completed all these things. So for the visibility, um, we're going to do it when username is empty. Yep. When username is empty. Uh, or if the guild is empty. Or if their avatar is empty. So if either of these three things, three things are empty, then they're going to see this grayed out button. So when all three things have been completed, then this button should go away, which also means that this complete profile button, which actually does increment by one, 
that one should only show when all three things are filled. So uh, we're going to set the visibility conditions of this button to an email or when a username is not empty. And these are and conditions. When guild is not empty. And when avatar is not empty. All right. So now we see that because these three things have not been completed yet, all we see is this grayed out button that does nothing. But the moment we start typing in things like username, um, Bob, I'm going to be a dragon. And I'm going to upload my avatar. All right. These three things are now filled in, which means they're no longer empty. So now our actual button to complete the profile, which increments by one, is true. So when I hit this button, then that column that we filled out over here, right, this profile complete button should be one. And because these three things are filled in, and this now equals one, it'll satisfy our if then condition, right, which then our has profile should become true. All right, just so we see that all of this actually matters and it means something, we're going to set some tab visibility now. All right, so I'm going to come over here to tabs, and the My Profile tab, right, should only appear when their profile is true. So My Profile features visibility when has profile is true. Okay, since has profile is not true yet, then there you no longer see the um, My Profile. Same thing with the all users. I don't want them seeing all the users yet until their profile is true. Visibility where has profile is true. Okay. And same thing with the guilds. Features, visibility, um, where has profile is true. And I always set this condition for every tab that I create. All right. So now the only tab that they see, right, is the onboarding tab. And you don't see that nasty onboarding logo on the top here. You have some nice text. All right, so if, oh, and lastly here, for the guilds, or for our onboarding, we only want to show this when uh, has profile is not true, which it currently is. Okay, so when I hit this button, then that column should be filled with one, which means the profile is now true, which means this onboarding tab goes away, and all of the other tabs appear. Let's test it. Complete profile. Drum roll, please. Ah, look at that. So we no longer see the onboarding tab. Can we see the other three tabs now? And I come over here to the data, and I see that our profile complete is one. Nice, right? And it'll never be anything else besides one. Okay. So typically what I do, I'll come over here to the sheet, and you can like hide this tab or make it tiny or something else you want. Just something to know that not to mess with this tab because if you, you know, make it anything else besides one, then it's gonna assume that the profile is not complete anymore, right? So you can come over here and hide the column. One less thing if you have to mess up. All right, so we've completed our profile, uh, our onboarding process. We have now the My Profile to set up and we're gonna be in this tab for quite a bit. Um, but we can do some trickery here to make this look a little prettier. Right, right now this is a list view. We don't want it to be a list view. We want it to be a details view. You can see that it already puts in some information here. Right? Um, you may or may not want your email to show. Right? You, may or, you don't need that text or this or that or the other. Right? So here you have just a nice uh, title with some information. And we want also want to make sure that this tab is only visible to the person who is signed in. So we're going to come over here to features and set a filter where the email address is the signed in user. So if I am anybody else, you see that it doesn't recognize me and it brings in the onboarding process. Okay. Um, now for this onboarding tab, I guess we should also, well, yeah, okay. We should also make this onboarding tab specific to the signed in user, where email address is signed in user. 
forgot to mention that. So the onboarding tab needs to have that feature as a signed in user as well as your profile. So when I go back to preview as me again, it recognizes me now and shows my profile. All right. Okay, so let's go to the guilds. Okay, and let's add in a column for the image. I'm going to do it through the data editor here because I can, now I can specify that it's specifically an image column. I will call this build image done. If you already have image links, you can throw those into your spreadsheet or you can use the glide um, data editor to add in images from Unsplash or to upload your own from here as well. So if you haven't yet uploaded your image, you don't have a link for them yet, come over here to the data editor and you can upload them by dragging and dropping them in. I'm just going to search for some from uh, Unsplash here just to make them a little bit faster. Let's just find one from a lion. Ooh, this one looks good. Okay, dragon. I don't know. I guess this. All right, unicorn. This one should be fun too. Let me get like a nice image of a unicorn, not a cartoony anything. Yeah, see, there's a unicorn. One like a real unicorn because they exist. Like this, maybe. All right, and then a beast. Ooh, I don't know. Let's see what we get here. We type in the word beast. Lion. No, not a lion. No. 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 All right. How will we change this from beast to like wolves or something? Because we don't have all day. Oof, there we go. All right, fine. All right, so this person belongs to dragons. And if you want to start pulling in information about that guild, we need to create a relation. So over here in the data column, we're going to go to our users tab and we're going to add a column where the, um, or the username of the guild so the guild name matches the guild name of the guilds. So we'll do relationship to guild. Where the guild name matches the values in guild's guild name. There's only one, so we do not need to match multiple. And then we can bring in the image if we want to. Um, I'm going to leave it for now, actually, just, just that relation. Okay, back in the guilds, what we're also going to do here is we're going to add a column and we're going to call guild members. So we're going to call rel members, where it's a relation where the guild name matches the values in users guild, but they are multiple, right? Because there might be more than one user of that guild. Done. All right, so here on the profile, right now we can add in a relation, let's say, of our guild relation. So it's going to have the guild name, the guild color maybe, and the guild image. And when they click on this, it brings them to that guild. We're going to have the title, and the image could be the guild image, let's say. It's been like this. I'm finding a tiger. Yes. All right, so that's one way that you can add in some information here. Okay. Uh, the other way could be. Um, adding in some lookup fields. For example, we could do a lookup of the guild name, as well as the guild image. Like so. And if you didn't want to do a relation, let's say, you could do like a basic column, a basic table like this, where on one side you have the image, the other side you have the name, something like this, you know, could also work. So, you know, pick your flavor. All right, and then in the guilds tab, right, we actually have an image now, like so, and they click on it and you'll have that same view, right? But now we also want to include all of the users. So we can include an inline list 
And the inline list is going to be the members. And let's have it be a tiles view. When let's have those tiles be circles. All right, and let's have four to a row. We're going to include their username. We don't need their guild. Just their username, I guess. And then the image is their avatar. So I belong to the dragons. So you'll see something that looks like this. We can call this guild members. I don't know. There's not a good margin in between these two things. We can add one by adding a rich text field and just throwing it in here and just clearing the rich text. Something like that. So as more members appear for the guild, they'll appear down underneath like so. And then clicking on this will be brought to that player's public profile. So uh, we can set this up as well. So again, we don't want to show the email address to our other users. So we'll show their username and we'll show their image, their avatar. Right, and eventually we'll have some more information about the user down here as well. And we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. That looks pretty good so far. And then the last thing here is this all users tab. So this all users, we're gonna have it be set up the exact same way as we had just seen in the um, in the members tab. So we're gonna create the tiles view and we're gonna make it circles. And we'll have four to a row for a username, details is nothing for the moment, and image is their avatar. So now it matches right, the guild. All right, one last thing I guess we can do with this is maybe we want people to follow other users. So we can add a favorite component. And instead of favorite, let's call it follow. And our list label could be following or the followers. No, following. And then we need to set a key for this. So the key should be something unique. And in this case, our email address for each user is unique. So we can do that. And so let's say I want to follow this person. Now you see that you have an all and a following under the all users tab. And this all users tab isn't going to be one of our main tabs. So when we go to the tabs here, we're going to throw the uh, all users into the so now we have guilds, and we have all users. And we have a nice little profile page where we're gonna begin adding more information related to our gamification app. All right, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at robert.petito at and stay tuned for part two.